Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 110 of Be With Me. We're in the book of Acts, and we're following the travels of Paul and a few other guys uh, on the second missionary journey. Now, Paul has just gotten kicked out of Berea. The people of Berea mostly were, uh, they received the word with all eagerness. They examined the scriptures daily to see if the things that Paul was saying was true. But then a rabble arrived from Thessalonica, 50 miles away, agitated and stirred up the crowds, got people uh, angry at Paul. And so he went to the coast to make a 222-mile trip to Athens, Greece. Now, for you, for those of you who have seen a picture or visited Athens, it is a very impressive city. It was, It is an impressive city today. Uh, and guess what? When Paul visited uh, in approximately 50 AD, uh, it was an impressive city there. The Parthenon, think about this, the Parthenon was already 500 years old, majestically sitting on top of the Acropolis, the high city of ancient Greece. Wasn't They didn't consider it ancient at the time, but the Parthenon was already 500 years old when Paul got there. So, and here's the thing we need to understand. We go as tourists today, and these are kind of generic monuments to classical architecture, but they weren't that for that time. They were specifically made for one purpose, and what is that? For worship. Athens was built for worship. And when Paul got there, he found that it was entirely committed to misworship, that is, worshiping the wrong thing. So listen in here. This is from Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Now while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his buddies didn't make the trip, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols, devoted to idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. And you can see all that today. You can see the the, the, the monuments and the agora, the agora. And some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and they brought him to the Aragopus, Aragopagus, uh, which is Mars Hill, saying, "We know what, may we know what this teaching, this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean." Now, all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. All right, so back to the main point today, which is that Athens was built for worship. And unfortunately, every part of Athens up to that point was built for misworship, except maybe the Jewish synagogue. The good news is that there's that the people of Athens were sensitive to godliness. I'm using a small g there. That is that there is a God bigger than me. They understand that, that God has a power and an influence above me and that I have duties to that God, some obligations and resources and consideration and maybe even worship. So they sort of have the outlines of the right thing. But the bad news is they built the whole city devoted to idols and idolatry and shot their arrows at gods that don't even exist. They missed the only thing that they were actually shooting at, which was, which is the one true God. And the other thing we need to know is that these these temples uh, that were there, they weren't just, you know, uh, monuments. They were devoted to them. They were actual temples where m- money was devoted and activities were devoted and effort was devoted. And, and what Paul finds here is when he walk, walks around the city is all those efforts were in vain. So Paul is accused of being a, for, a preacher of foreign divinities, which is kind of right in the sense that uh, anything that's unknown to you, we would call foreign. So they were right on that point. Secondly, is this divinities, and maybe he was 
maybe they got confused about the Trinity. People are still confused about it today sometimes. So that might actually be that they we get a sense that they were kind of listening. Uh, they do kind of make the accusation, though, that this unknown God is perhaps unknowable, and Paul is going to straighten him out on that. So he debates in the synagogue, which he's had the habit of doing, but also in the marketplace. And now this Agora, this Mars Hill area, uh, this was an outdoor shopping mall kind of a thing. So lots of people, and if he's debating people there, he spoke uh, uh, Greek, he was educated in the Greek language. So uh, he had no language barrier, barrier when he went to uh, Greece. All right, so... They call this a new t- teaching, and uh, and they may, they may be right in that sense too. Jesus said at the Last Supper, a new commandment I give you, which is to love one another. And it's new because now everybody has the Holy Spirit and uh, that they've had the great example of Jesus. So you get the sense that they kind of want to know. They, they even say it. We wish to know what these things mean. Um And the whole city, I think, demonstrates that they kind of want to know because the whole city is built uh, built on worship. So this makes me think of the verse from Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has put eternity into man's heart. That is, there's a God-shaped hole in every single person's heart. And and every person you meet here today has a God-shaped hole, H-O-L-E. And tomorrow we're going to find out what Paul does with this hole, that he's, he's going to use this eagerness that the Athenians seem to have for uh, God, small g, and turn it into an eagerness for uh, for the one true God, capital G. So he's going to make that God-shaped hole, H-O-L-E, and he's going to turn it into the God shape whole, W H O L E. So stick around for tomorrow as we learn about the Athenians who go from being built for misworship, and Paul's going to correct that and say that Athens is then going to be built for worship. Thanks for listening. I'll see you tomorrow.